Exploring Creativity, that's the title of today's episode. I'll be pulling out Nick Analog Effects. It's going to be a fun little ride, so stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm so glad you joined me again today. Today, I wanted to have some fun. I wanted to really uh, get a little bit creative today, and I thought there's no better way of doing that than pulling out analog effects. And without any preconceived ideas, I just wanted to pull this into analog effects and look at presets and make adjustments, and see how wild and crazy we could get. And just to show you how fun analog effects can be and how it can really help you to take an image to directions you've never dreamed of going before. With this software, we can tap into and open new worlds of creative photography. If you don't own analog effects or if you want to give it a try, I'll leave my affiliate link in the description below. Just click on that. That'll take you right to the Nick website where you can purchase it or download a free trial try it out i don't have any promo codes for it nick doesn't really give those out too often but if you use my affiliate link i'd greatly appreciate it because it helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way and i thank you for that well if you're ready to have some fun let's get started now i could either launch nick up here under filter under the nick collection launch it that way analog effects pro 3 or i made an action for it which is normally the way i would do it from now on because my actions are right out here front and center i can just click on that or you could come up to file and go into automate and pull up the Nick Selective tool. It gives you a lot of great new features. I made a video on how cool this Nick Selective tool is. I'll link that at the end of this video in case you want to watch it. But today I'm just going to go ahead and come right up here to filter and come down to the Nick collection and click Analog Effects Pro 3 and we will get underway. My original title for this episode was inspired by this image, and it was going to be called Take the Road Less Traveled. And by the way, this is a stock image, but I wanted to find something that we could get a little creative with, so I chose this image today. This won't be an in-depth tutorial, but I wanted just to show you how I would work with it, and you'll learn as you're watching me moving sliders around and trying out different things and different filters. So hopefully it'll be fun, it'll flow fast, and it will be enjoyable. My end goal is really just to pique your interest and show you a really creative tool in case you're in a creative rut. This is a nice way to go and it's a lot of fun to work with as I hope you'll see in this video. Already it looks better. Here's a compare button here. If I click it, you can see there's the before and there's the after. A lot more contrast and detail and you'll notice I have this basic adjustments over here. I could switch it off turn it back on. There's a detail extractor here. If I drag it to the right, I told you I was just having fun, but I just want to show you can add a lot extra detail to it or take detail away, brightness, contrast, add more saturation if you'd like. And so I'm just going to start playing around, but I like those basic adjustments. I just want to say up front, I'm not a big preset guy, but on a piece of software like this, I think presets can be really helpful, especially on a product like this where you can get so many amazing, crazy results. It's a good place to start. Right now I'm in the camera kit, and this is basically all the different filters that you can work with. There's really cool things like dirt and scratches, light leaks, double exposures, all kind of really fun stuff. But if you come down where it says cameras and click this, this is basically your preset. Presets. And there's really quite a lot of them. You see here under all this category, there's 96 presets in here. And then they're broken down into different categories like classic camera, double exposures, motion, just to name a few. Now for the start of this creative journey, I'm just going to click away on some filters. And we can see our thumbnails over here. I'm in this category called vintage camera. So let's see what they look like. Here's one. Now they take a few seconds to load up because... There's a lot of things going on. If you look to the right of the interface, these are all the different filters that are being used in here. Pretty cool stuff, really. Okay, so that's one preset. Here's another one. Oh, I really like this one. It's like a kid in the candy store. You know, you click through here. I'm going to remember that one. Hold it in the back of my mind. There's another one. That's not a big fan of that one, but that's okay. There's tons to choose from. Now, that may work really well on another type image. That's kind of fun. I like it. And let's go through... Let's try this one here, a little more contrast on this one. I like that too. And you notice it has a photo frame. And if you'll look over to the right-hand side of the interface, there's our photo frame down here. Now, 
just to show you, you can click away at different frames here. Let's try, let's try this one. And that gives you a different look. Well, let's try another one. And that's kind of cool too. And if you don't want a frame, just uncheck it. And by the way, you have instant help down here. Whenever you hover over different things, the instant help will change. Talks about camera presets here. If I hover over a uh, lens vignette, it tells you about lens vignette and what it does. And if I hover over the checkbox, it tells you what the filter on off box does. So it's pretty detailed and it's interactive with all these different uh, filters. And again, this is a creative process today. So I remember this first one up here, I kind of really liked. So I just want to take a note where it's at, but we're going to try some other presets. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and star this one by clicking right here. That way it'll be easy to come back to. By the way, let me know in the comments section below if you like a video like this where I just go and try things out and see what I can come up with. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Next, I think I'll check on the black and white category here and see what's in here. This high contrast one looks kind of interesting. I think I'll give it a star because I may come back and use it today or use it on something else. The sepia tone look looks interesting as well. Not bad, kind of muted. Anything else in here? Uh, how about this one? Gives you that old photographic look. So if you're going for something like that, not so much for me today, but so far, I like the high contrast. Once I find one I really like, then we'll start playing around with sliders over here. But let me go to classic camera. Let's see if there's something in here. Click on the first one. I kind of like that. I like the color tones, the, the warm tones, really nice. Anything else in here? Here's another warmer tone, maybe a little more contrast. Nice blues in here with the oranges, a nice color palette. Kind of like that one. I may star that one as well. How about this toy camera group? Let's see what's in here. Now this simulates obviously a toy camera, you know, with like a cheap plastic lens. Click on the first one. Yeah, kind of out of focus and so on. I like it. Let's try this one. Kind of nice too. This one has a little more contrast. I wish you could uh, talk back to me and tell me, hey, I like that one or I don't like that one. Let's try this one. Not a fan of that one, but again, something like this may work exceptionally well on a different type of an image. You just never know. And by the way, I do want to point this out. Just because something looks horrible and awful on this particular image, that doesn't mean it won't look good on something else. It really depends upon the image what's going to work. And that's why it is nice to have a lot of different presets at our disposal. And I have to say DxO really go out of their way to give you presets. The Nick collection is not cheap, but you do get a lot of different filters, and DxO are constantly updating this stuff at a price, however. And feel free to leave comments about the price if you think it's overpriced or if you're thinking you're getting a lot of good value for your money. You know, let's talk about it. I'm not filling toy camera today. Let's try motion. Let's see what's in motion because I'm thinking some motion could look really good on this image. I'll start out with one here. And again, I'm looking through thumbnails. Oh, that's kind of fun. I do like that. I'm going to go ahead and store that one. Let's try motion two. I don't like that as much. The circular motion there. I'm not really a big fan. And there's a diagonal motion on that one. Let's try this one. Okay. Let's try this black and white motion six. Oh, I like it. I do like that. I'm starring that one. So I got two starred in here. I'm a motion guy. I'm a blur guy. I love all that kind of stuff. Let me know if you like blur. To me, it's very exciting. You know, we think with all these great cameras we have out today, why would you want blur? I love blur. Do you love blur? Do you love grain? I love grain. And there's some really good grain in uh, all the Nick different pieces of software. Maybe not in each piece of software, but... Whenever there's grain, it's going to be high quality grain, if that makes any sense at all. Let's try. No, I don't like that one. I'm going to try mo. No, I'm going to go to this other black and white one down here. Oh, look at that. Kind of interesting. I don't think so much in this image, but I do like it. Now let's move on to what do you think? Let's try double exposure. And you can use other images with double exposure, by the way, which is really nice. Not going to get into that today, but let's try some. Let's try the first preset. There's a double exposure there. Kind of different. Let's try this one. Hmm, interesting. I love it. No, I don't like it. 
but it could be cool again on another image yes it may be really nice let's try this one it's a little more subtle i think yeah it's a lot more subtle actually let's try this one this one's out there i think uh yeah that is out there now it might be a next indie band's album cover the road less traveled I've almost narrowed it down, but let's try a couple more. Multi-Lens. This is one of my favorites. I did a tutorial on Multi-Lens once. It's on my YouTube channel. I can't remember exactly where, but if you search, you'll find it. In the search field, type, I think, probably Multi-Lens. Let's try some of these. Let's check out the first one. Isn't that cool? I do love multi-lens. The images and the panels can be changed and altered. Let me show you this real quick. First off, let me find the multi-lens filter. And you see we have different types we can use here. We have five different layouts. And then if you hover over these panels, see those little orange boxes pop up? So on this box right here, if I click on this handle and drag it, see I can make that larger. I can grab this area and I can move it around. On, the, on this one over here, you can see I can like move it in or whatever you want, but the possibilities are pretty endless. Let me try one more category and then I'll pick one. Let's try this on Vogue. Let's see what we got in here. Let me click on Auto Chrome 2. Oh, that's nice. Again, I'm seeing an album cover there. And how about this Distress? This is going to give you that old funky look. Definitely old and definitely funky. Uh, how about Good Vibrations? Uh, this is one I've starred. I liked it. Looks like someone had a bit too much to drink with the lines are starting to blur here. Kind of interesting. This video will get too long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut to the chase. I'm going to come back to All, click on Favorites, and all my favorited presets will be in here. And let me see which one did I like a lot. I think it was this one right here. Yeah, this is the one that I really like. I'm going to go ahead and come to the right-hand side of the interface. I'm going to shut the frame off for now. I may or may not use the frame, so let's just uncheck the frame. And yeah, I really, as the kids used to say, dig this. And sometimes I still say it. Let's come over to the right side of the interface. I'm going to go up to the top. Now, this is a stack of filters here, which is a part of that preset. So you'll notice we have always have our basic adjustments with every filter, by the way. And then I have bokeh here, I have light leaks, I have lens vignette, I have film type, and I have frames. So let's play a little bit and see what we got. Do we want more detail? We can drag this slider to the right and give it a more grungy look. And you know what? I like that grungy look there. Now we can work with control points and things, and I have videos showing you how to do that. I'm not going to get that involved in this, but I'm just going to see if I can make some simple slider adjustments and come up with something I really like. Let's check the brightness here. I don't know. Right there looks good. Do I want more saturation? Less saturation? I don't know. It was looking pretty good. How about contrast? I think I like that. Now let's see what we can do. Let me shut the bokeh off and see what it's doing. Don't see it doing a whole lot. Uh, around the edges down at the bottom here, yeah, you can see that big circle here. You can change the size of these circles by pulling this in. Actually, this is the uh, graduation point here. As you can see, I get a lot more blur around there. And yeah, that's kind of the look I'm looking for. Like, you know, we're driving down this highway. Look at that nice blur in there. And then we can take that blur strength and give it tons of blur or pull it back, be a little more subtle and not, I don't know, overboard. We can work with highlights and things like that. And again, I'm just having some fun here, so I'm not getting into all the details. But let's shut the light leaks off. Usually what I like to do is shut that particular filter off and see what it's doing. But you can see that, it's hard to believe, huh? but we're getting all that effect right from that light leak okay now here's the strength of the light leak if i start to pull it back obviously i'll be removing the light leak and that looks cool too but i do like that light leak but maybe i'll just pull it back a little bit and then we have different light leaks in here now this particular light leak is the one we're using but let's try this one just to see if there's a, what the difference would be like and it's it's a big difference right and let's try this one and let's go back to this one. And now when I hover over here, you see, you can like move that light leak around. And you see that, see this edge over here, it's moving with it. 
Okay, and I you can't change the size of it, but, but you can move it around. And I think right about there looks pretty good. So that's a light leak. And all these different filters now have control points. And let's go to lens vignette. Let's shut the vignette off. There's before and there's after. And actually, if you look right here, there is no vignette. So they're letting us decide what we want to do in this particular preset. So if we take this slider to the right, we'll get a dark vignette. But if we take it to the, I meant to say the left, not the right. To the left, we get a dark vignette. Take it to the right, we get a light vignette, which can be really cool. But I think I'm going to go with the dark vignette. I don't want it too dark, but I want our eyes to be pulled down in. We're moving down the highway. We're searching for adventure and whatever comes our way. I just couldn't resist that. I love that song. Right now, we're in the subtle category. Now, we have different categories here, as you can see. Uh, let's try warm. There's different warms in here that we can try. You'll notice these warms are tinting the sky green, and the shadows are being warmed up a bit. And see if there's anything in here that I like. Nothing's really full up my boat. I really like the one they originally had under subtle, but we have black and white neutral and toned. Let's try black and white tone just to see. More like a sepia tone black and white image. But we can get different effects here. I like all those because I am a black and white guy. I really like that stuff. But I'm going to go back to subtle. And I'm going to go back to three because that's the one that, that I really enjoy. Now, one final thing I want to do is see if I want to add a frame. But I also want to point out, not going to go here today, but let's come up here to camera kit. If we open up camera kit... These are the filters being used, the ones with the little orange lines, okay? But you can go ahead and keep adding filters to this. You don't just have to take the ones in the preset. You can take filters away. You can add other filters. I just wanted to point that out. But now, for the matter at hand, let's see if we do want to use a frame. Let's click on, let's click the frames back on. Now, that was the frame that it gave us. But you see, it's altering my image a good bit as well. So, I may not like that. Let me click on this one. That's not looking too bad. And I like it. You can also adjust the scale of that frame. So if I drag it like this way, I can have that frame encroaching the image less. Which if I do add a frame, I may want to do that. I may want to go something like that. And I actually think I kind of like it. Here's before the frame. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Do you like it with the frame or without the frame? I'm going to say with the frame. There's vignetting with that frame, so I may not need this lens vignette, so let's check this off. Okay, that's without it, and that's with vignetting. I think now that I've used that frame, I'm going to shut that vignette off. I think that makes sense, and I think I'm happy. But wait, I just thought of something. Let me turn the vignette back on. What happens if I drag the vignette to the right now? See, I can reduce some of that extra darkness that that frame has given me, like right above about here okay so here it is without the vignette and with it that actually helps it i i like it i think i'm going to be satisfied with that maybe too much let me just pull it back a little more gosh okay there it is now i am done let me click on the compare button here's the before that's where we started and here's where we end and i really like it and once you're totally satisfied all you need to do is click apply and that'll send you back into photoshop and the result comes back for us here and there you go. Well, there it is, everyone. I decided on a fictitious book cover. How about A Creative Journey by Dave Kelly? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. And uh, if you don't yet own Analog Effects Pro or the Nick Collection, go ahead and click on my affiliate link and download a free trial and try it out. And if you own the Nick Collection, try Analog Effects out if you haven't. And let me know your thoughts about Analog Effects Pro in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!